I played through Amori a little while ago, and while I thought it was good, I didn't really think anything else. Until I played through the Hikikomori route. And my entire worldview has changed. Real quickly, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm a small YouTuber just making a video. And there will also be major spoilers for the video game Amori. With that said and done, enjoy. First and foremost, I want to establish that Amori is a defense and coping mechanism. Sonny was so overwhelmed with emotions and self-hatred that he made a lesser version of himself so that he wouldn't have to live with the guilt. Think of Amori as like a stripped-down version of himself. Hmm, if only there was some kind of visual indicator of this. Oh, there is. He's in black and white. It's kind of like it's representing his lack of personality with how the colors have been stripped from him. And he has less details than Sonny does showing that he is a lesser version of Sonny, at least visually. And it doesn't stop there either. In the final battle between Amori and Sonny, Amori calls him out for being a coward. Now, in what capacity would this make sense for Amori to do, if he wasn't a way for him to escape his guilt? Think of Amori as like a safety bubble. When Sonny is in Amori, he doesn't feel like himself because he's cut away all of the aspects that make him human. So in this way, it makes sense. By Amori being his means to escape his past mistakes, it also makes sense that this part of himself would think of what he's done as cowardly. And the best part of this fight in conclusion is that Sunny can't defeat Amori. He can't overpower this version of himself. All he can do is hang on. And when he inevitably fails and falls down, he's left with a choice. To either give up and let Amori win, or to get back up and fight again, even if he might lose. And if he gets back up, he wins. He defeats this toxic version of himself. But if he doesn't, then Amori consumes him. Because it's proving to himself that he's never changed and that Amori should be the one in control. And while the story of Amori is beautiful, it's one of my favorite games for a lot of different reasons. But I'm not here to just dissect what Headspace Sunny is at during the game, and I just want to talk about my own experience with Amori, because... I, I mean, it's the name of the video, after all. Because if I'm being honest with you all, I didn't really like the person who I was. I was extremely emotional, selfish, and it just always felt like I was too much for people, and just wasn't good enough to have any friends. So after enough time, I just shut down. I locked away these aspects of myself that I thought were useless, and in order for this to make sense, I'll have to, you know, give a more physical example. Let's say that you don't like how your nose looks. Now normally you'd just accept it and move on, because everyone has ugly aspects to themselves. But when you've been pushed repeatedly, you might just take off your nose and replace it with a new one, and throw the old one away. While it isn't as literal as that, that's essentially what Amori is. When you've been pushed repeatedly and have made plenty of mistakes, you'll desperately throw away aspects of yourself that you don't like. I don't like how angry I used to get. I didn't like how mean I could act if I was really angry, so I got rid of my ability to feel most of that anger. The definition for the term hikikomori is severe social withdrawal. Basically, it means that you isolate yourself off from others, but that's not the full picture. In Amori, you don't just isolate yourself off from others, you'll also isolate yourself off from your own self. And I think the saddest part of it is that it's somewhat effective. I don't get as angry as I used to anymore when a situation would make me really angry. It feels so small now when I'm really angry, and if that's all Amori was, you know, just getting rid of a few aspects you don't like, then it probably wouldn't be a bad thing. But it is. You don't just get rid of aspects that you don't like. It's this insane course correction to where instead of just getting rid of, like, three of your worst traits, you get rid of almost all of your traits. You essentially become a cardboard cutout of who you once were. You live in this advanced state of numbness, to where almost any emotion you feel is greatly reduced. You're a censored version of yourself. You're this picture-perfect superstar. You're this picture-perfect superstar everyone wants you to be. And in the same vein, you're hollow, you're empty. You'll look for things to fill your time with, but nothing will satisfy you. I'd, I'd call it aggressive adaptation. 
if I were to give it a medical name besides Amori. And I think the phrases that would best describe it are trim the fat and I've hit gold, but at what cost? And the scariest part of it all is, is that it's just so damn comfortable. Your life becomes easy. You're never stressed. At most, you're just annoyed. But in the same vein, you're never happy either. You're just a little surprised. That's the black and white nature of Amori. Sure, I'm not in pain anymore. But I'm not having a good time anymore either. And the thing is, most people who have this, they aren't going to want to leave Amori. Because it's a lot like alcohol. Sure, it's bad for you. But when it makes living this easy, I don't really care. I just want to have it easy for a little bit. Is that so bad? I don't want to have to struggle anymore. I guess something interesting to bring up too is the hallucinations and the lack of full control. While Amori is a condition entirely around control, you're not always in full control. If you try to go into the piano room, sometimes during the daytime segments, you just can't. And as far as my experience goes with that, is that I was texting my friend and I wanted to tell them, I still consider you my friend. And my autocorrect isn't turned on, I don't like the feature. So after I sent the message and, you know, looked back down at it, I saw that I texted them, I still consider you to be my best friend. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself, I didn't type that. I mean, it's fine, I still do consider them to be my best friend. But, you know, I, I just didn't mean to text them that, you know? And the other part of it all is the hallucinations. And I think it's because fear is probably the strongest emotion you'll feel while in Amori. Because during the game, something just haunts, you know, sunny around every corner. And I can confirm this to be the case for my experience, because after playing Amori for the first time, I started, you know, getting hallucinations around my house. I'd see this version of something in my closet out of the corner of my eye, and while I was walking past my closet, I could see Helmari out of the corner of my eye, and it felt like she was right behind me. In more one-off cases, I saw something in the kitchen to my right, and when I was walking to my bedroom at night, I saw this weird pale thing by the bottom of the couch, like right in front of it, like it was laying on the floor next to the couch. This time was a lot different though than the other hallucinations because this one was casting a shadow. I had my phone flashlight on and it had like the shading of something that was in the real world. It wasn't just one solid color, you know. After I turned to get a better look at it with my, you know, phone's flash, it didn't immediately disappear either. It was just still just lying there. I was staring at it so confused because, you know, it looked like the top of someone's bald head. And, I like, I just kept watching it, and after a few seconds, it looked like it got dragged away by its legs out of my sight. And that was probably the one I remember most vividly because it looked so real that I actually just stopped right there, made sure the hallway light was on, and just looked up prayers on Google so that way I could feel some semblance of, you know, safety. Um, because I didn't want to go you know, past the living room to my room in case that thing would jump out at me, you know? And I can say that was one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. I can't really remember when this started. I can't remember when I went into a movie. I can't remember the exact time where I just started isolating myself off from everything. But I do miss the way I used to be free. Yeah, I was kind of a loser, but I was a loser who was having fun. Maybe someday I'll get back to normal again, and will express myself freely like how I used to, but I don't know when that's ever going to happen. I guess if I had to help out, like, psychologists that are trying to treat people with Amori, I think their best bet would be listening to them and putting on certain music or, you know, giving them things to help match whatever feelings their thoughts say they should be expressing, kind of like... Kind of like that uh, SpaceX Boyfriend 2 fight. In the fight, he's left neutral and won't easily change his emotions. And his defense is so high that your attacks do essentially nothing. And the gimmick of the fight is to listen to him reminisce about a memory of Sweetheart. And then, 
you give him a material that will help him feel whatever emotion he should be in that scenario, and this is very accurate to how Amori works, at least in my experience. I'm usually left feeling extremely neutral. It's only in very specific contexts. When I'm given like a certain phrase or thing during them, I'll feel like a really strong emotion, like I'll feel really happy for like a few seconds and smile. And then that feeling fades away and I'm just back to neutral. If anything, I hope this can give you a better insight into the horror of Sunny's mind by me sharing my experience. Because imagine being so dissatisfied that you replace yourself so you can be more normal. And I just want to thank the developers and the people who've worked on Amori for making the game. I don't think I would have ever realized the state of my condition without having played the game. Without playing the game, I wouldn't understand myself as well as I do now. So yeah, uh, to all my fellow Hikikomoris out there, I hope you enjoyed and that I was able to accurately represent us as a group. Maybe someday we'll stop being afraid to be cringe. Or maybe we won't. Hallelujah. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe and leave me a silly comment. If you didn't, be sure to kick me in the balls and tell me how annoying my voice is. And I'll see you all in the next cringe video I make, or I won't. Peas. Holy shit, it's 1.43 at the time I'm ending this voiceover, what the f- And in order for me to, you know, and in order for this to- So after enough time, I shat- shat. I shat.